Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Coach Jan here. And I wanted to share this idea uh, that I've been talking about a lot this past week because I've been using it in life and I have to use this in life. And it's the concept of if you're playing push hands and both opponents are um, calm, still, if they're both still for a moment, someone's got to input data. And for me, I know that as a competitor, I can only win if I control that moment, if I'm aware of that moment of when everything seems like it's okay, that's when you have to make it not okay <laughs> so that your opponent is disrupted. And uh, it's a very interesting uh, process. So I wanna show what I mean by this process because it, it, it manifests very tangibly and it's a strategy that you can use in your Tai Chi push hands, uh, whether you play competitively or not. And if you don't think you play competitively and you just come and you hang out with your your friends and do it friendly in the park, et cetera, you're still being competitive. It's just not as over. <laughs> so uh, just because you don't have a judge there, you don't have points, doesn't mean that you aren't testing each other. And this is something that I learned in, in Wu style Tai Chi from Sifu Kiptong. Um, Josh Waitskin uh, uh, brought, uh, had his own version of doing it on the US Tai Chi Push Hands team, uh, which was, uh, I, I, I believe came from Grandmaster William C.C. Chen. Uh, and some of those ideas. And I, I, I very much find it in Grandmaster Chen's uh, reverse breathing body mechanics. So I wanna talk about this in multiple ways. And let's just do a few breathing exercises first uh, to warm up and get in a line of postures. Imagine I string lifts you up, tailbone drops down, inhaling up, exhale, push the color out, inhale, drawing in, exhaling down, inhaling up, exhaling down. Breathing formula two, draw the color into the belly, inhale even deeply, exhale down, inhale up, exhale down. Three, inhale up, exhale wash out, push the color out from the belly, inhale draw the color visualization in, even deeper, even deeper inhalation, three stages, Exhaling down. And finally four. Inhaling up. Even deeper. Even deeper. Even deeper. Exhaling down. Wider stance, hollow fist. <clears throat> Press it on the hips. Boom. Sitting in. I think I went a little low. Sitting into a half core stance. Remember to sit though. If you need to do this because of any particular inj injury, if you need to do it higher, notice that my head is caught off the frame. That's because I'm really actually too high. A lot of people will do their horse stance like this uh, because they may not have been trained uh, as, as, you know, over time. You want to start this out as, 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 uh, as soon as you possibly can, getting yourself into a deeper half horse stance. Not so deep that the knees go past the toes. That's not good for the knees. Um, not so much on your heels that your toes are coming up. That's not good for the heels. The center of the heels, drop the tailbone down and sink and sit. And you have to be aware that you're going to want to, your body's going to push you back up. Um, <laughs> so you always have to be readjusting yourself and sitting, et cetera. So if you start feeling yourself come up, sink right back down. Just over time, you build up lots and lots of strength. Exhaling down, pelvis rotates with the Inhaling up, eyes and belly button. Exhaling down. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. <clears throat> Inhaling up and hold. Exhale, sink and feel the re relaxation here. And then inhale and feel extension here. So lift the rib up, try to straighten or on an angle the head. The spine, make a line, imaginary line. So feel the whatever side you're bent onto, extend open a little bit more, which will actually improve the stretch here. And exhaling back, inhale deep, exhaling and rolling over to the other side. Inhale deep, exhaling into it, inhale and extend out of this side. Extending up, lifting the rib up a little bit more, feel how it helps to. Align the posture in the back and then exhaling down. Inhaling up. Exhaling. And reverse. The breath should feel like a rope as you're climbing. 
visualizing the color coming in and visualizing it go out. Inhaling up, exhale, sink down, inhale, lifting up a little bit more. Really feel, really feel yourself anchored in with both feet and just moving out of the way. As if you're bobbing and weaving, slipping out of the way of a punch, getting out of the way, to maintain your root. And then exhale it back. Inhale, B. Exhale. Again. You find, I just found myself lifting this, lifting my weight off of this leg, not necessarily picking my foot up, but I felt it come up off. So I have to soften my hips and really get that anchor idea down. And then inhale, feel the posture coming up, and exhale. And feel how that helps the posture as you're going around. <clears throat> Drop the hands down. Inhaling up, exhale out, inhaling deep. And we'll just warm up each leg because this is going to come uh, very much in handy in, a, in what we'll do for this push hand strategy. Inhaling up, and let's just hold golden rooster. If you've never done golden, golden rooster, side parallel to the ground or higher, back foot bent, weight on the heel. Tailbone facing down, hips are balanced and aligned. The heel, hand, and hand, nose, all on one imaginary line in front of you. Same leg that's up as the hand that's up, guarding the forehead. The shoulders are soft, so you won't find the shoulder lifted. You'll find the shoulder blade pushed forward to help create the posture. And the bottom hand, notice that the tricep is slightly inflated. Palm is facing down. This is very much like a body lock behind the lower back, under someone's chin, holding the back leg, rolling them over. Inhaling the color to the belly, spreading the whole body. And exhale, shift. Inhaling up. And shift again. Inhale and up. <clears throat> Six breaths here. And one more time. Exhaling down. Before I put the weight, I exhale, push into heel, ball of foot, big toe, collapsing, relaxing the knee, all the way going down the inside of the leg. I feel spiral twisted down and then inhaling coming up. All that happens in an instant. You want to be able to, it's going to come very much in handy in a moment. And we're going to speed it up. Six breaths. Pants a little tight. So let's talk about this moment here. Let's talk about put our hands, let's get ourselves into a front stance. And a front stance, let's do a basic front stance. Some of you may do it lower, some of you may do it higher. I do my best to fight tall quote unquote, when I do push hands. So I'll have one of C.C. Chen's uh, uh, reverse breathing stance a little bit more. All right, it's just, it's just a bit small, basic front stance. <laughs> a lot of painting too flower. So front foot forward, back foot 45 degrees, nose over the knee, knee over the big toe. Softening, softening my hip into the groin. So I have to soften the groin so the hip melts into it. And then notice that that little spiral We've talked about this many times, that little spiral attack. 
Just like when we went here and we came up, you have a little spiral. You're spiraling into the ground. You're growing out of it like a growing from the roots coming out. So you want that feeling here. If you were a boxer, boom, you would have your cross. So we're not pivoting the foot though and, and extending the arm yet. Uh, you will do that at certain times. So let's pretend we're playing push hands here and we have this moment. Uh, maybe our hands are on, let's actually lower it because this, this is the push. Let's lower the hands here. This is more realistic. The realistic moment here is that you have two players where each of them are touching each other's arms. If uh, a more sophisticated um, target is the elbow with your hands. So if your hands are just on the arm, uh, the forearm or the wrist, et cetera, the most powerful position you could have in terms of controlling the movement of the arm and the body is the elbow. So like, if you haven't trained that way, do it, try it out. Um, it is technically more efficient. So I don't care how you feel. <laughs> there are certain things that is, this is simply a more efficient way for you to aim at a target. Aim at the, at the elbows. Um, however, you don't, doesn't necessarily mean that you can, shouldn't deviate from that. The understanding is that just like a sattvic thought, the concept of the sattvic thought, there where the background thought is always, uh, always there. Um, in Western culture, you may know it as the uh, a song you can't get out of your head. So you have a song that you can't get out of your head. The sattvic thought in Eastern culture, you implant that thought like the sound of om, and it's always going. You want to implant the sattvic thought that's always playing in the back of your head. When you play push hands from this position, you want to implant certain targets. You know that this is the target, that the hands are here. They're going to go to those elbows as the, as the baseline. So you want to go to the elbows as the baseline. You deviate from it intentionally, intentionally, but you always go back to it. So here on the elbows, and this is the moment we're going to talk about. So if you <laughs> made it through some part of the video, that's fantastic. Because uh, <laughs> we just did a whole bunch of warm up, introduced the idea of a bunch of warm up. Now we're getting back to it. So we're here, and you might be soft, and you might be very still with an opponent. <clears throat> now, this can happen at any moment. You could be in a 50 50 clinch. You could be anywhere. It could literally be any particular position, but you're still with the opponent. Whoever inputs the, the idea uh, <clears throat> is going to. And it's, it's whoever inputs the idea intentionally. I want to actually be, let me be more, more, because um, uh, this is my first time talking about this in a video. I do this, well, we train this all the time. But essentially, it's very tough to predict if I do this, then this happens. Um, you want to be testing your opponent as much as possible with small little movements. And I mean this small. That means that on the elbow, on the shoulder, you want to see, notice how my arm naturally is coming right back out. I'm very relaxed, so I'm testing this on myself. And you can do this on yourself. You want to do this on your opponent. And look at the rhythm I'm creating. So I'm creating a rhythm, I'm creating a time, I'm creating math. I can break the rhythm by double timing the rhythm. So you create the rhythm and then you break the rhythm. So I know that when I push, he's going to open up. Push, he's going to open up. Push, he's going to open up. So the second that he opens up, the moment you do that push, you're going to break the rhythm, double time, and you can go for the technique. In this instance, it might be an arm drag or, or going for an inside position. So let's talk about, let's just do this for a moment. And just do your best to create a little rhythm. Let's slow it down. The whole thing is you want to make sure that you're, that these moments of overt rhythm, this is actually a very big movement because you have to think about it. So you don't want your opponent to know that you're thinking. I, again, I'm, I'm right here. I'm relaxed. You can lower your stance if you want to get more of a stance work workout. I'm just doing little movements with my finger. 
And these little movements are meant to touch the opponent's arm so you can test what's going to happen. You can do the same on the shoulder and same in a bunch of other places. But let, we're only using the arm as an example right now. So with that example, let's, let's do this. Let's double time. And we'll, let's talk a little bit about a combination that we can do from this double time. So one of the things, and you don't necessarily need this as a lead in to this moment, but one of the things that you can uh, attempt is the concept and we talked about this a lot in Negong exercises of the elevator drop. The elevator drop is going to bring your hips down. It's as if you relax completely and you can, you can make a combination with this moment here is tap, elevator drop, push. That's a one, two, three. So you're setting up your one. When you do these little taps, you're testing out, you're testing the waters. You're testing to see if the opponent is going to move. And you don't do this for too long. You want to actually be doing this the entire time you're playing, little bits here and there. You want to test the opponent, play around with them, test the opponent, shoulder on the opponent, boom, shoulder on the opponent, coming in, boom, boom. And you're throwing these little tests in. You're throwing these little, little, little tests in. If I sidestep to the left and I touch the, 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 the opponent's right arm, does it move or not? <clears throat> if I sidestep, if I sidestep to the right and I touch the left arm, does it move or not? If I touch the shoulder, does he react? Obviously, if you box or do anything like that, you're always doing, you're testing out the opponent with your movements and your, with your footwork and with your uh, with hands, etc. Um, so in this particular position, let's get right back to the Tai Chi push hands application here. Um, and again, I look at Tai Chi push hands not as, oh, this is a martial art that's going to let you do anything and everything uh, because it's a martial art. Tai Chi push hands is a, is a high pressure, the sport of Tai Chi push hands is high pressure redirection for me. And so this helps me in every aspect of my life. And when we do these exercises, of course, there's a martial application, but I, I highly always recommend highly having other martial experience that you can connect into this stuff because it definitively <laughs> helps you. So you're here, I've been testing out my entire time and now I know we're still, boom, we're still. So now I'm gonna go one, still. If there's a reaction on his arms, great. And I'm doing it. I'm not doing it enough so that he knows that I'm doing it. But if I know that I can get his arms to react, so maybe I'll do one, two. Because on that one, two, he's going to do a reaction. He's going to do something that I want him to do. So one, two, drop. So push, drop. Mark. Mark is on here with us. So. <laughs> All right. So we're, we're doing the push, drop. So push, drop, or touch, drop, push. And notice that on my push, notice that I'm doing, if you do reverse breathing Tai Chi, right, so we have et etc. notice that I'm doing this. Yeah. Dropping down, inhaling up. Switching the foot, dropping down, inhaling up. I'm doing that little gentle bounce. If I want to take it from a Wu style perspective, what I'm doing is the press, the long press. Wu Sao meaning long back leg, long extension. This is the Wu style version. This is the Grandmaster Chen reverse breathing and Yang style version. And there's many other versions. This is the Lu Havatha version. Whatever, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't matter which version you do, it matters the timing and the strategy and uh, the technique here. So the technique is touch, elevator drop the hips to change your level that sudden drop let's talk about this in more detail that sudden drop touch exhale everything sudden drop my the weight of my legs the weight of my body is being supported spiraling down my legs so now we have that concept from the beginning spiraling down i'm spiraling down and i'm going to push out of it you can keep your hips square too you can drop, but there's still be a little drop here. It doesn't have to be as overt. Drop, 
And the opponent's going to react to that. Your opponent might think you're going to shoot for their legs <laughs> if you're wrestling. Uh, your opponent might think, specifically in push hands though, your opponent might think that you're going to uh, uh, push their belly or hit, hit them from the side and send them away or turn them. Whatever this is, if you've gotten them to react once, that second input. So remember, you're calm. Or the whole concept here is talking about what are you doing when, the, when, the, when both opponents are still calm? I'm inputting a little bit of data. I see what that little bit of data does to them. So I can now set up my next move. That's actually the, the, the theory that I wanted to, not theory, um, the concept that I want to make very tangible. Uh, <clears throat> we're both still, we're both comfortable. That's a problem. You don't want your opponent to be comfortable. So I'm going to put a little information in just to see the reaction I get. Once I get that reaction, I know I can plan around it. I got it again. Okay, cool. One, two, and I've dropped. And now the final movement here for this example is a big push. I'm going to push forward in and up. That means you're going to aim for targets, shoulders. You're going to also aim, you can either push with your palms, which totally works, or you can create these little knives that slide into the underarms and then thereby doing your best to protect your thumb by placing it directly against your opponent's body versus having it out or having it stuck up anywhere here, but placing it against the opponent's body here and going up, doing your best to roll your opponent's shoulders over their hips. You wanna roll the opponent's shoulders over the hips and you wanna do it explosively from the ground. So you can also, you, Explosion uh, speed is relative, but uh, I, what I mean by that is that it works slow. <clears throat> there are people who don't know how to handle it slow. Um, and I do recommend trying it and doing it slowly first. Dropping down, inhaling up, rolling over somebody's hips. Notice again that I'm doing, like I, I will adapt <clears throat> to, my, to between Wu style and Yang style stance uh, as needed when I play. So I might be in this, Yang style stands by, I might need more. I need, it might need the length of the Wu style. So, boom, I might need to go break the, the Wu style concept of the heel entered into the ground. So, I, I will. I might need to go onto both toes, break both heels, and I will, which is more like the Taiwanese. Um, you see Thai, uh, Taiwanese style push hands, but you know, a lot of times you'll see them go up on both on the balls of their feet and then, boom, come back down, which is why we do concepts like jolting with the intention of pulling the body back in. When you inhale, come down, exhale out, inhale, pull the heels in. It looks like calf raises, but it's actually very strategic uh, training for, for Tai Chi push hands. And of course, there's lots of health benefits and all those stuff too. Again, <clears throat> tap, drop, up. And you're going up the opponent's shoulders and over. You're going up and over, and you want to aim for the corner of your of the space that you're in. <clears throat> if you're outside, you imagine that there is a target, a like the corner of a of where a wall meets a ceiling, and you push the opponent to that angle, essentially 45 degrees up. You want to push them over their their, their shoulders. Sometimes, some, you may get somebody who's very good and very flexible at holding this posture. In the event you get somebody, and I recommend getting into this posture as, as we talk about it, because you've probably been in this posture if you play push hands. Play push hands, someone's pushing on you. Sometimes you get to this posture and you know, it sucks for a little bit. You can feel that there's more tension in your lower back. Uh, and sometimes you have to get that pressure off of you. Sometimes the leg you might feel locked in that front leg and may not be able to pull or, or roll your pressure off of you on an angle that keeps you grounded, uh, especially when you're doing fixed step push hands and maintaining your footing is part of the uh, idea, uh, part of the goal. <clears throat> so, um, and for the World Series of Tai Chi push hands, um, which is the new tournament that I am the head judge of, uh, we will be allowing people to pick up a foot for fixed step push hands. You'll have your pedestals, you'll be able to pick up a foot as long as you put it back down on the same pedestal, you won't be able to transfer. Um, but you can do this, you can do that, you'll be fine. <laughs> but as long as you maintain, uh, huh, if, I'm, if I'm on a pit of fire or two pillars, 
I might be able to do all this and come right back to my pillar. That's great. That's great Tai Chi in my opinion. Um, a lot of times I'm doing a kick and I'm like, oh gosh, and then I come right back. Aha! <laughs> you know? So um, let's switch legs and um, let's, let's do one more idea here. Let's say that you're doing, um, let's bring this idea to, to a 50-50 clinch. And this idea, you're in the 50-50, one foot forward, same with hand. And even if you, if you were switched, whatever the body contact is, but we'll do 50-50 right now, you can do the same tap that we're doing here with your shoulder. This little shoulder roll right here, boom. You can, if we make it more over, 50 foam. I'll often do this. Notice that I'm lifting my shoulder too. We talk often about not lifting the shoulder. You always, you can always break the rules when it's intentional. <laughs> and, you, and if you know how to get them. Uh, I read this wonderful quote, uh, I was telling Mark about it yesterday, from the Dalai Lama. Learn the rules so that you can break them. <laughs> and I might have misquoted that. But it's on, I, I'm looking to look at my phone. It's, it's one of his uh, instructions for life from the Dalai Lama. It's a big poster my son's kung fu school. And so I'm gonna pick up my shoulder just to roll it into my opponent. Boom, I roll it in. And I, what I wanna do is I wanna see the opponent, I wanna feel the opponent's body naturally push back on me. So I'm rolling it in, I feel it naturally push back. So that means if I roll, I'm rolling to create space. So I'm doing two things now. First, I'm rolling to see what the reaction is. But in general, when you do this type of pressure on a shoulder, you're often attempting to create some space for another kind of movement. If I was boxing, I might crack my shoulder into the opponent to turn the face into the tar my, uh, my, my weapon here and launch right at the target. So bang, bang. So you know, I might do that in boxing. That's, that's definitely a great boxing drill to do with some pads or, or hands, et cetera, with, with the partner. Wonderful, but in push hands, you roll here, and what I might want to do is I might want to do this for an arm drag. Uh, I might want to do this for a shoulder blast, where I'm like, one, I want to create some space, and two, I'm going to blast my bicep uh, into, uh, blast my shoulder. I'm going to punch and slice my bicep through the opponent's bicep. Uh, so that, that we would call that a shoulder blast. You roll on the shoulder, one, you test it, two, boom, right here. And it's really this motion right here. You may see it also as this punch in, in many Tai Chi form. Boom, this punch right here is, is the mechanic for the shoulder blast. Uh, it's one of my dad's favorite moves. And you go one, two, you're testing the opponent. Three, you break the rhythm, meaning you've created a rhythm and then you come right in between the, the timing, the math that you, you've established. So that you, and you open that leg, boom, and you sink into that other leg and you turn the opponent out. Just so you can see the footing here too. Again, roll, roll, bang, create. I've broken the rhythm and I'm pulling and dragging the opponent over. Again, one, two, boom, three. I open, I blast and turn. One. You can even open it a little bit beforehand too. One, and, and one of the great concepts here is that when you do these little things, you're pulling the opponent's mind. So if you wanna hide a movement, hide a technique, you can do the little tap. You can do the little tap and open the back leg. You tap once to, to get their attention. You tap again and you open the back leg. They're probably not going to see that. These are, all, these are really wonderful, uh, Look, every opponent's different, so I, I never want to say that if you do this, this will happen. But these are the techniques, these are the intentions. So you push, push open the back leg, and boom, and you're already set up in the back leg. Or you may want to do push, push open the back leg, and turn at the same time. More complicated, takes more drilling, uh, and and that's essentially the concept I wanted to share today. And so. Uh, if that's why you can watch this video and, and I hope you enjoyed it, please ask some questions. That being said, I want to finish up with some um, other breath work to kind of bring us more into the Tai Chi mindset before we finish. Because all these great push hands exercises are wonderful.
but you always got to bring it back to the breath work, the visualization, <clears throat> and the expanded awareness. So palms facing down, imaginary string lifting you up. And let's do our, our nice big orbit breathing set to finish up for today. Boom, sitting down. And boom. Uh, let's, let's start with the hands down, palms down. We're going to inhale, inflate the triceps, keeping the shoulders down, fingers facing each other. My middle fingers are pointing at each other. Doing my best to soften out the tension. And now inhaling. I inhale the front down the back, but if you do the opposite from your Tai Chi training, do that here. But this is still big orbit breathing, slight tension in the anus, tongue on the ceiling of the mouth, mouth closed, tongue, uh, mouth closed and all breathing through the nose. In and out through the nose. Inhale, roll the awareness up the front. The visualization goes from the toes to the top of the head. Roll that visualization up and then exhale, head down the heels. Again, do the exact opposite if you've been taught to do so. Six breaths. And then turn the palms up. But when you turn the palms up, boom, do your best to keep the, the elbows out. And I don't mean out like that on an angle. Rolling here, but if you roll the thumbs out, obviously, if you just let the thumbs lean, the elbows will turn in, which is a great technique, but we want to maintain some structure here. Uh, <clears throat> so just some space between the ribs. Shoulder blades disappearing into the upper back as if you're holding a bowl here. Six breaths. Big orbit breathing. <clears throat> and dropping the balls. This is its own neck going exercise, which is a different set. We're going to keep the elbows down. <clears throat> this is the Wu style. Now we're combining Yang and Wu right now. This is the Wu style version of this posture with the elbows straight down. The Yang style would have the elbows up <clears throat> slightly. And we'll do the young style version of this, of hugging the tree, elbows straight down. It means that the fingers are facing each other rather than out, the common hugging tree here. We're going to do the elbows down. Breath pulled up, front down, back. Six breaths, a big arc. Hands as high as the heart. Inhaling out, palms facing out. When you get up here, you might feel some tension in the upper back. Soften the lower back and push the shoulder blades forward. Try to soften the muscles. And again, you're only using <clears throat> the tension necessary to hold the posture. So you want to relax out, drop the elbows down. Six press, big orbit press. And palms facing each other. Do your best to feel as if there's 
and it's jumping between the fingertips, between the hands, as if like you have a little finger light bulb, you turn the switch on the circuit. Your best to give yourself that sensation. Remember all this stuff, you really have to generate a lot of the ideas in your mind to amplify them. Six breaths. And notice that what we talked about in the beginning, that your stance might get higher. I just noticed my stance is higher, and I gotta fix it. <laughs> Really look for tension in your body, it's unnecessary. Even not in the areas you might be focused on. I just found some tension on my left forehead, my upper left forehead. Well, oh, we released that. I can feel the circulation change. It's great. So always give yourself the ability to scan the body while you're doing these things and, and to uh, look at what you may not be uh, focused on. Inhaling up, palms going up, like you're sliding your fingers on the wall, standing up. Exhaling down. This is the elevator drop. Remember, one way to help you get the elevator drop, the concept is that an elevator's falling, like the wire's been cut in slow motion. That's the hips, and it helps you bring down all your weight. It pulls it down because gravity is just taking everything down. But you're controlling the, the drop in, in slow motion. So you're still controlling the drop, and the drop is definitely happening. And one way that you can help engineer that sensation is by softening the tailbone as you drop down. Rather than sticking out the butt or tucking it in, the tailbone just softens to point straight down and it helps to direct that downward momentum. <clears throat> Connecting the hips and the tailbone intentionally with the mind. And then inhaling, opening up, splitting the cheek left and right, <clears throat> and compress it. The sensation here should be as if you're pulling strings or rubber bands apart, and then compressing like a giant sponge or pillow. But there's no flexing in the in hard intentional flexing in the arms. The sensations in your mind, you want to keep as soft as possible. There's many variations in this one, especially for the mental work being done. But in general, feel energy pull apart and compress it. Sink it right to your center line. Inhale, opening up. Arms opening up. Exhale, as you're holding the earth, meaning that your arms are in front of you, not behind you. Inhale, up. This is called woman's womb is the earth. Exhaling down, the backs of the hands touching. You're still doing the elevator drop right here with the hands falling. Inhaling up. Exhaling, eyes on the belly button, supporting with the abs, inhaling up. Leaving with index, middle finger, thumb, the spinning downward motion. Color coming in through the hands into the belly. And then once they connect, exhale, elevator drop down. Four more. <clears throat> Inhale up. Exhale. Inhale up. Exhale again.
Yeah, yeah. I feel that. Two of the hand in the yeah. Big breath. Yeah, I'm not sure you hear those cracks in my back, but that's, I love that, that uplifting hand. That really helps to realign. Feet two fists apart. Inhale, breath. Lift the wrists up. Fingers back, chest up, hips forward. Bend the toes, exhale, butt back, fingers forward. Soften the knees. Inhale, yeah. Fingers to the back, chest up, hips forward, bend the toes. Exhale, butt back, fingers forward, soften the knees. Inhale, yeah. One foot forward, down touch the toes, come right back up. You're never done if you don't stretch, you don't finish. Touch. Inhale, yeah. 45 degrees, touch the toe, switch, inhale, yeah. Exhale. Yeah, 45 degrees, touch the toe. Inhale, you have to switch 90 degrees. Inhale, out one more time. Inhale, you have hands go over the head. Exhale, wash the color down, parallel feet. Inhale, you have onto the toes, turn to the right side. Exhale, wash the color down, right side. Inhale, you have to turn to the left side, onto the toes. Exhale, and wash it down. Inhale, yeah. Bring the hand over and behind you as much as possible and exhale. Slap it up. Up the inside. Other right. side. Up the inside. Down the outside. Hold the shoulders. Down the back. Inhale, yeah, just the fingertips. I should have blood returning to a source. Two more, just the fingertips, not the elbows or wrists, just the fingers. Put the hands together. Push the good breath work and visualization through the palms into the chest, strengthening the chest cavity, so your lungs tapping around, massaging into the pectoral muscles, all the lymph nodes, pressure points, footing your up. Okay, other side. Knuckles. <clears throat> Down, up, reverse it. Down, up, four fingers, sternum, U shape on that side of the collarbone. Hook under the lips and thumb under the chin, squeeze. Switch for the hormones for sleep, earlobes. Up, over, down, like under. <clears throat> up to the side, up to the side, up to the side. Fingers on the scalp, front to back, back to front, front to back, back to front, massage. And back to front. Grab the scalp needle, like that. Three, another patch, one, two, another patch. Another patch, and then reverse it. Another patch, another patch, another patch. And opposites, one, two, three, two, two, three. Keep going all the way back, and then reverse the directions for the opposites, and go back to front. And then four fingers up top the forehead. Massage, and then reverse it. Temples. Two, two, three, five, switch. Oh, nails, thumbnails, and the groove between the eye and the bone tapping around. Feels really nice. Second circle wider, wider. 
third circle widest, middle finger on the eyebrows, strong pressure, bridge of the nose, sigh, nostrils, heart, switch, top of the auto, switch, top above the teeth, and the right just above the gums, and around the teeth. Below, just beneath the gums, tongue, and reverse it. Flick the fingers out, thumbs. Let's do this. Press and hold. Oh, let me do this. Drill and tap around. Circle, second circle wider, third circle widest. Top and bottom, sides. Top and bottom. Top and bottom. I don't think I've done this all week, so this feels fantastic. Sides, top and bottom. <coughs> Sides, top and bottom. Sides. Press a hole and drill. Three, and then one circle, second circle bigger, and the third circle is the widest of the three around the edge of the palm. Top and bottom of the thumb and sides. Top and bottom, 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 and sides. And then one, two, three, and grab. One, two, three, close the eyes, inhale, white light. Again, we're gonna use, start using the sound to help, a sound to help our visualization help move the attention to where the vibration of the sound, where we want the vibration of the sound to go. So we're now combining visualization, the breath work, and the sound. So we're inhaling white lines to the belly. And we're gonna wash the sound through our bone marrow, the yellow bone marrow, and wash it through the whole body and try to feel it in all the bones. Uh... Inhale white lines to the belly. Roll it up the front of the body. And then roll it down the back of it. Uh, inhale up the left side. And roll it down the right side. Uh, inhale white line to the belly. When you exhale, push it down the legs into the ground. Try to feel that sound vibrating through the floors and the ground and come back up and around like a fountain in reverse. Like a big bubble of light around you. Um... Inhale, yeah, white lines in the belly. One more time, pushing into the top of the head. You want the sound to feel like it's coming up and out helping you expand your awareness of the vibrations around you and painting with the visualization as if the light is making a big bubble around you. Uh... Yeah, you just feel light in the whole body. It's the surroundings. I have gratitude for the body people in your life the space that you're in thank you so much for joining me for this this uh i never shared this one before um and i want to share more details on this i'll make even higher quality videos on this so for those of you that watch on the youtube channel and appreciate that kind of stuff so always feel free to ask questions coach jan i love you guys and uh or or share uh, not just questions but also like comments um and helping us construct an even uh more dynamic ecosystem internationally for uh, Tai Chi and beyond. So love you guys. Oh, hold on. Uh,